to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, we'll go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. All right, Wi-Fi's. We are coming to the end of season two of the wireless or nah season of the wireless woman. And I'm ramping it up, okay? I want to leave you with a dope beat to step to. So today we are going to be talking all about privilege. Every ism that I know, every ism, whether it be racism, colorism, sexism is built on some type of privilege and despite certain groups and classes of people not feeling as though they belong to privileged classes of people despite the fact that some people don't experience the privilege of their class class <laughs> privilege all the same is the founding principle of all of these isms so today we're going to talk about pretty privilege yeah. and what it means for feminism oh yeah oh yeah you didn't think i was gonna go all the way around town this season and not bring it back home <laughs> So I am, but before I get too deep into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Ladies, get yourself down to this carpet. It is time for the next transmission. right welcome back wi-fi's to yet another transmission of the wireless woman go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video why because when you like it well i love it so i have waited until the time of the day where <laughs> i'm gonna have evidently this streak of sunlight on my face um <laughs> but the show must, it must, it begs to go on, darling. So if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. And that you click the notification bell for notifications of when I upload new content and when I go live. Listen, that notification bell and subscribing is going to become really important in the new year because maybe I got a new life waiting for me and I can't promise you that I'm going to be on my regularly scheduled program after I move into this new house and start college again. So you want to be locked in. You want to be tuned in because if I'm going live, if I'm uploading new content, you know, I have something worthwhile to say and that if for no other reason, is worth subscribing. So today, I'm going to be talking about several things, but in this video, in the essence of time, because I am making some changes to the way I do content so that we're not on here all day. Okay? Okay. All right. So today, I am going to be talking about privilege, in essence. I think we fail to ascribe the issues and problems that we have in our community to where the blame belongs. And I know for me, having been a millennial, yeah, a millennial, I sit right in the middle of two generations that don't really understand each other at all. But whenever I listen to Gen Zers, they are 
careful to point out that all of their <laughs> individual and community flaws come from us as millennials. And at first I, I felt attacked, you know, I was like, this is an unfair indictment, but no, upon further review of the information, upon review of the play, I think they're right about this one. And if I was to ascribe mostly all of the issues that I have with my millennial peers, it would come back to privilege. I think we were the first generation of Black people that were able to live securely in privilege, whether it felt like it or not. I mean, let's be honest, our boomer parents could not dispense privilege in a way that we always felt privilege, but now that we're getting older and we're seeing what they had to contend with, we understand that we were a privileged generation. And as a result of that privilege, we see the fallout of a whole community of people. And I'm watching people argue with each other about who's the most privileged group. We as women look at our male counterpart and we can see male privilege all over them, baby dripping dripping in finesse okay but they look back at us as their female counterpart and feel that we have seen the majority of white privilege you know of using our position as women to be in a more privileged safe secure space than they have been in and Despite the fact that I disagree with how they're going about it, I think in some ways our male counterpart might actually be right. Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer. And for those of you who know me best, you know I would rather burn my face off than to admit that a man was right. But I do feel there is some merit to what some men have been saying. So with the advent of the internet, Al Gore's internet, Beyonce's internet. We're seeing a lot of privilege now that was once denied to women be attributed to them. We're seeing a lot of women who are able to get access to new levels of pretty privilege due to social media, the internet, social groups, and the problem with privilege is that privilege allows certain groups of people to have access to power, influence, all of these things. And unfortunately, privilege is kind of like narcissism. It's one of those things that you can't see and you can't really prove. And for that reason, a lot of people think to themselves, if I can just either be like those people who have this privilege or do what they do, I myself can also share in said privilege. Well, that's the reason why you see so many women that are getting, you know, the BBLs, they're getting tummy tucks, all these different things, because the belief is if I look like these women, I will also share in their privilege. I've also been seeing this with a lot of our Black men. Just being honest, I didn't say it was most, I just said it was a lot. And it's been my experience that many of them feel because of male privilege that they can have access to patriarchy, <laughs> to white male privilege. And so we're seeing them align themselves with a lot of those views and, you know, a lot of the, the thought patterns and echo chambers of these privileged groups of people. A lot of people don't understand privilege. They just know they want to have it. They know they want to have access to it. And by doing these rights of privilege passage, I can also have those things. Well, a lot of men have been coming into these social media spaces complaining about what privilege has been doing to women. And I think it's got merit. I think it's a fair assessment because we as women have been complaining about what male privilege is doing to our dating prospects. As much as we don't recognize that a lot of the issues and problems that we have been having is coming from male privilege. Because of our men's lack of access to power, we often don't equate their misogynistic views with the same patriarchy 
the same white male supremacy that has created oppression and subjection in all of the world. It's responsible for imperialism, for colonialism, for racism, colorism, and in large part, sexism. Because let's be honest, it's been men that have gone out and built great empires and conquered the world and fought the wars that caused us to have this American society that we have right now. It's been males who have created and instituted the governments that we live under. And any group of people who has done that much work and wants to be the ones that hold on to power are going to put into place systems that keep other people subjugated. Now, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. You are thinking, especially if you're a man, I didn't come here to hear that. I came here to hear how you women are wrong. Ha, 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 ha. Joke's on you. Gotcha. Gotcha. And go get that here because the system of female supremacy, if you will, the system that has created the privilege that a lot of these women live in was created also likewise by men. The women that we see who are being pushed to the forefront, who are getting all the male attention, who are getting flued out, are not the women that cook, are not the women that are long-suffering. They're not the patient women that these men say that their institutions have been founded on. If they've been founded on these submissive, uh, kind, sweet women that they came home to after long days of pillaging and foraging and colonizing, well, then it would seem that a change in the desirability politics has caused a pretty privileged <laughs> <laughs> that even these men themselves have come to hate. So here's the thing, men. Men have been the ones that created the great caste system that we as women live within. You have made the determinations of what is considered to be desirable over other traits in women, whether they be personality traits, whether they be physical traits, whatever it is that you as men value, that is what you're going to see in your women. Now, I am going to speak to this in two separate ways because I have two different audiences that I want to take something away from this. So one, I have been myself as a woman in several privileged classes of women, so I can speak to what pretty privilege as a whole does to the psyche of a woman. Young women have more privilege than older women do. <laughs> women of a certain racial groups have more privilege, and it shows, baby, it shows. built into the way they are socialized as women. So I talked on one of my episodes about featureism. This was very early, way back in season one. And you should go check that video out. It, it, it resonates. Okay. It's, uh, it's still good today. It's still fresh. And because of my features, I have belonged to two privileged classes. I've been a young woman, <laughs> and gotten all of the perks and benefits of being a young woman. And I have what some have called Eurocentric features. I don't know. I mean, people, you got chinky eyes. I guess that's what that means. But because of the refinement of my features, you know, I've been told I'm cute to be dark skinned, which means that I do belong to a privileged class of quite attractive women. I have also had body yaddy 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 So for that reason, I've also belonged to a sexy class of women. And there are men who will sleep with you because of your body and have no respect for who you are as a woman. There are men who like to be next to beautiful women because of the attention they feel they get from other men, kind of like having a Benz Beamer or Bentley 
Um, and there are men who just like young women for the naivety, um, for the lack of wisdom that they have in their mind, for their inability to be able to discern a red flag. Some men just like a young woman. So having been a part of those privileged classes, I have been rewarded for very bad behavior. Okay, I have been treated very well by men for acts that I was not deserving of. Okay, I have gotten good treatment for poor behavior. The saddest part about the whole situation is on the flip side of having had so much privilege. I mean, I'm evidently a very privileged woman. You can tell by my attitude. Flies used to say stuff like that to me. I'd be like, what are you talking about? Oh my God, I am so nice. They'd be like, "Uh uh-uh, you, you, you. You know what you be doing to guys. I'm like, no, I don't. Oh my God, oh my God. But the thing of it was, I didn't want to embrace the power of privilege. I knew I had privilege. I think uh because i grew up such an ugly duckling and this is a side note but let me say this it's a lot of bitter hurt men about women that passed you over in high school and middle school but all of us were ugly in high school and middle school every last one of us even the few little cute kids they had they just had on nice clothes that's really it their parents just sent them to school looking better than us they they might not have been latchkey kids or something like that they might have had like the newest shoes or something like that best dress but they were not cute either okay your hair was puffy on one side you had a unibrow all the cute girls in middle school had a mustache every last one of them had the the sideburn hair that went all the way into the back of the neck hair we was all ugly Okay. And I think because I didn't really start to get privileged till I was up in like my later 20s, I didn't even get privileged all the way through college, even though a lot of people talked to me about my time in college. And I don't know if I was there or something or not. Like, I don't know what that's about because they'd be like, oh my God, you were so popular. And I'm like, popular where? Popular who? But okay, whatever. But my point is, by the time I started to be aware of the fact that I had privilege I also had a little bit of wisdom to go along with it like if I had been a young girl growing up that was told from inception from birth that I was cute maybe maybe privilege would have had a different effect on me but because I grew up I remember being four years old and my mom was like listen you ain't gonna win no beauty pageants okay okay and I'm gonna talk about that too (laughs) y'all mammies y'all women Mm. patriarchy is not just for men patriarchy is for the pretty too okay but um you know my mom was like you need to be smart you need to have skills so you know I grew up with some personality with with a little bit of humility and humbleness about myself so even when privilege came I never fully embraced the power of it and used that power for evil like some people do with great power comes great responsibility a lot of these men that are still bitter about not being picked, not being chosen. We try to get chosen. In middle school, um, you know, they're like the Darth Vaders of the community now because now that they've, you know, grown into their looks a little bit or finally got those fancy clothes that they never had when they were in school, you know, grew a beard, stuff like that, that can really bring a man up you know, in estimation, really can raise the the stock value of a man. You know, they have gone over to the dark side with it. And the one thing I can say, though, is that being pretty allows you power over people. It allows you access to privilege that really no one should have over another person. Power no one should have over another person person when we see all the ugly in other communities of people who have been able to use privilege over other people the same thing is true with pretty privilege and a lot of men are being damaged by women who are (laughs) in their pretty privilege but I still got to turn it back on you because you all have set the determining factor that pretty women can be basically useless to society as long as they fulfill your needs, wishes, and desires for them. Now, when you get cut 
by the same knife you use. You can't get mad at all women about that because the truth of the matter is just like black men feel about male privilege. They like, listen, male privilege isn't benefiting me. And I meet a lot of white people that say the same thing. Listen, I'm poor too. White privilege hasn't put me in some rooms or given me some opportunities that other black people haven't had access to. And because of these groups of people who don't get access to the privilege of a certain class for these different reasons, they don't feel like it applies to them. You meet men all the time. You know, as Kenyatta Diallo was saying about black men being the powerless patriarch, a lot of black men don't think patriarchy is running rampant through the black community because they don't have access to the power of it. So there's a lot of women who are not wielding the power of pretty privilege. And that's the place where you men got to choose one of those if you don't want to get your feelings hurt. Ain't that right? Amen. You tell us as women that same thing. You tell us that all the time. You make sure to let us know that Pookie and Ray Ray let us down because all of us want them. So I need you to understand <laughs> that you are responsible for how this whole thing played out. Okay? Okay, man? You want to change it? Change it. You got the power of the law on your side, and I know you don't think so because Tory Lanez lost that case, but you do. Men created the child support system to protect women. Men created these laws they're the ones that are all up in the supreme court there we've had 46 presidents how many presidents have we had who knows yeah 46 i had to check all of them been men every single solitary last one so these are your systems that you've created. Same thing with desirability. All you got to do is look at how much money the pornography industry makes, the adult film industry makes. That's not all women. That's not women. That is women being desirable for men. So you all are the, are the ones who found these systems. And you got the power and the control to be able to take that power back by choosing the type of women you say you want to partner with. But you can't gaslight us and tell us, oh, we want submissive women and then go after bad bitches. I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. The flip side of this coin, though, is for my ladies. Um, patriarchy is not just for men. As a matter of fact, the greatest champions of the patriarchy and mostly all cultures are the women because we as women are the only ones who have the other side, the creative, the yin energy to be able, the chaos energy, the chaos energy to be able to disrupt that system with resistance. And I find more women looking to, believing in, and empowering patriarchy in the black community presently than men, if I'm being fair. And it's because we believe there's power in patriarchy. We believe there's protection and provision in it. And there's a lot of women, more often than not, the women that I see who are out here championing the causes of the patriarchy telling women that they should be saving themselves that marriage is gonna save them from a life of being a baby mama mm. he's lying to you he's trying to lock you down as his wife while he lives another life he sees that you see he's a liar he sees that you, you got you got a baby with him and now he's gonna lock you down he's gonna put a ring on you and then he's gonna do whatever he wants to do a lot of these women that believe in the patriarchy are undesirable women. They're women that believe that if they take on the characteristics of the privileged class of women, if they be what men are telling them they want to see because they can't get access to privilege in any other way, that they will be treated with the mercy the kindness of the patriarchy if you've ever seen that movie 300 there was a little guy with the little hunchy back there is such a rope good king just past that western ridge and he wanted to be a part of the 300 and king leonidas was like nah we can't use you like you know like sorry ah you know mother should have killed you at birth type energy 
So he goes to the enemy camp and he's useful to the enemy because of the knowledge and the intel that he has. You know, we see this with these just pearly things, women and Candace Owens on certain days. These are the women who are willing to sell out their own interests, their own best interests for what they feel like is the protection of the patriarchy. You there, the Fialtis. So unfortunately, women, we are encompassed about by a great cloud of enemies, okay? I got enemies, got a lot of enemies. We got men on one side telling us who and what to be, and then we got women on the other side reinforcing those principles. This is the reason why you can't get a man, and this is women, we are going to have to be unplugged unbothered and unleashed during this time we have to get focused on the activities that build us up and make us the best women that we can be therapy eating natural foods building businesses getting educated buying property building networks with each other we got to get focused you know unfortunately if we're going to attract to ourselves the type of men that are going to resist the supremacy of patriarchy that don't have misogynistic ways we are going to have to cleanse ourselves from that type of energy and that type of um association in our own environments you know i said <laughs> i am here to build on a belief system that's going to lead to liberation. See, that's liberation and baby, I want it. And unfortunately, after cycles and cycles and cycles of slave mentality, of post-traumatic slave disorder in this community, we're going to have to get radical and revolutionary in our thinking if we're really going to be the antidote and the solution to the poison the poisoning that we're watching of our community. So if you see what I'm seeing, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, if you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. Ladies, gentlemen, if you're gonna be nice, I love to hear what you have to say in these comments. Let me know what you're seeing and what you're feeling. Because I got a lot of people that be trying to gaslight me, but I know I'm on to something. I, I, I know that we're headed somewhere and we need sober, like-minded people to begin to speak about the future in terms that are not just going to bring us more of the same results from the past. But as always, until the next transmission, y'all can go ahead and clock out for me. You are dismissed. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound.